This chapter of the Bible enumerates God's acceptable mode of worship and how our daily living affects God. We could see from this chapter God's burden and heart cry against the children of Israel who had perverted the worship of God and were doing things their own way. How does this apply to Christians today? Do you leave your house for church or a preaching engagement after a heated argument with your spouse and conclude that it doesn't matter? Some believers go as far as being unfair to their neighbors, engaging in illegal transactions, and defrauding their employers but still going to church on Sunday to lift holy hands. Some have concluded that these do not matter and that God only looks at the heart and not our actions. How true is this according to God's standard? Of course it matters. God is concerned about how you even think in your heart. That is why he said that if a man lusts after a woman in his heart, he has committed fornication with her already. Your heart must be true to God, which will reflect your actions and how you treat the people around you. Isaiah 58 verses 2 through 4 says, For day after day they seek me out. They seem eager to know my ways, as if they were a nation that does what is right and has not forsaken the commands of its God. They ask me for just decisions and seem eager for God to come near them. Why have we fasted, they say, and you have not seen it? Why have we humbled ourselves, and you have not noticed? Yet on the day of your fasting, you do as you please and exploit all your workers. Your fasting ends in quarreling and strife and in striking each other with wicked fists. You cannot fast as you do today and expect your voice to be heard on high. What is the state of your heart right now? Is your heart far from God? Do you seek God only with your mouth? Do you go to church and observe religious activities while your heart is not right with God? Do you cheat on your spouse and conclude that it is your personal affair and has nothing to do with your relationship with God? The people God addressed in this chapter were oppressing the poor, yet still fasting and doing other religious activities. God had to tell them that they were only wasting their time, for as long as they do not desist from hurting others, their worship of God will remain anathema. They will not find God. Instead, His wrath will descend upon them. How do you treat the people around you? Do you take delight in seeing other people suffer? Or perhaps you look away when you can lend a helping hand to oppressed people? God does not want a half-hearted or partial service. He wants all of you. Your inner and outer mode of living should always reflect Christ to the world. You shouldn't be in the clique of people who believe that faith ends in the heart, and it is so difficult to see the reflection of Christ in all the things you do. Do you delight in serving God as well as love doing other things that you know God does not approve of? The call has come to you today to search your heart and examine your lifestyle for things still finding expression in you, but displease God. Identify and do away with them with immediate effect. Don't seek God with sin. Don't cover up your sins and wrongdoings when you can confess to God and receive pardon. Seek God with all your heart to find Him. Obey the command of God fully. Don't be a hypocrite who is only a disciple in words but whose actions do not conform with the image of Jesus. It is possible for everyone to see you as a child of God, and you can also delude yourself that you are one, whereas God does not recognize you as his own. Tragic, isn't it? Don't let that be the story of your life. If it has been, you can still change things today. Your Christian life must reflect in your interactions with the world. If not, you are not yet a Christian. You are called to serve God rightly in deeds, in words, in total obedience to Him. Anything short of this is unacceptable and must be done away with. 
Isaiah 58, 8 and 9 says, Then your light will break forth like the dawn, and your healing will quickly appear. Then your righteousness will go before you, and the glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. Then you will call, and the Lord will answer. You will cry for help, and he will say, Here I am. If you do away with the yoke of oppression, with the pointing finger and malicious talk, your light has probably not been shining because you are not serving God in truth. You might have been going through that difficulty because something unpleasing to God has been blocking your prayers. But right now, everything is taking a new turn. You are starting afresh with Him in new commitment and consecration. You'll begin to see these blessings and many more manifesting in your life. Let us pray. Thank you, dear God, for your word of correction and admonition that has come to me. Thank you for the grace to adhere to your will that is available to me. Blessed be your name, in Jesus' name. Lord, you do not have delight in people worshiping you wrongly, with ulterior motives or wickedness in their hearts. Father, I bring my heart before you at this moment. Search my heart and purge out every wrong conduct or anything that makes my service abominable to you. I don't want to worship you only with my lips. I want to serve you wholeheartedly. I desire to be that faithful servant after your heart in whom you delight. Turn my heart to you. Let my whole heart yearn and desire you as the deer pants for the water brooks. Help me seek you in righteousness, holiness, and with all sincerity. I long to worship you all the days of my life. Help me to do this rightly, Father. I will not worship any man or idol. I will not be a slave to mammon. My heart is wholly devoted to you, Jesus, now and forevermore. Father, I ask for mercy for the times I have failed to be a good representative of the kingdom to the world. I have been unfaithful in doing charitable works. I give the excuse that I do not have enough, but now I know that even with little, I can lend a hand to the weary. Henceforth, I pray that your grace will be sufficient for me to give all that is in my capacity to the poor, sick, and feeble around me. I pray for the grace to say the right words of encouragement to the weary and fainting. I pray for strength to intercede for the oppressed and afflicted. I pray for the capacity to feed the hungry around me. And above all, to tell the lost about you. All these are my new commitments, Father. Uphold me in accomplishing them. I claim your promises for me in Isaiah 58, verses 8 through 12. Lord, let my light break forth as the morning. Remove the scale of obscurity from my life and let your light shine through me to the world. Father, give expression to my talents and the works of my hands so that kings and nobles will come to my light. Father, let my health be restored speedily. Let sickness and weakness of the body become a thing of the past in my life. Let your glory radiate over my life. God, I desire to stop living a life of limitation. I receive divine strength and the ability to excel beyond my present level. Lord, you will guide my soul continually. Your word will lead me all through my life. I will not be confused about what to do, where to go, or whose voice to obey. I'll walk in the wisdom of the Lord. The voice of the Lord will tell me what to do at the crossroads. The light of the Lord will show me the path to walk in, and my life will be divinely ordered to the glory of your holy name. You said you would satisfy my soul in drought. This present world is experiencing an economic drought. 
Notwithstanding, my supply is not from the world, and my confidence is not in the world. Therefore, I will live in abundance. My soul will be satisfied with good things. The works of my hands will be blessed. My mind will be productive, and I will live above the economic hardship. My barns shall be full. My life will be like a watered garden and a spring of water whose source cannot cease. Father, help me to be yielded to you in obedience and consecration. I will do whatever you ask of me without questioning your lordship. Take your place as the Lord of my life. Father, bestow upon me the grace to pray and not faint. When circumstances in my life are not in line with your word, help me to stay with you in the place of prayer until my life is the way you want it to be. Lord, I dedicate my life to living for you and pleasing you. I will not live for myself or please the devil. Jesus, you are happy with people that serve you wholeheartedly. Lord, I want my life to make you happy. Help me to serve you with all that is within me. I pray for those caught in the web of hypocrisy and false worship that this light you have shown me will also be revealed to them. May they turn to repentance and worship you in spirit and truth. They will cease serving God with idols in their hearts. They will cease perverting justice. They will stop oppressing the weak and cheating the orphans. They will give to the hungry and lend a hand to the weak around them. We will all be committed to this until our world is changed for the better. The statement that ends Isaiah 58 is, For the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. Everything you've spoken, Lord, is as good as done. Father, I believe that all the good things you've spoken concerning my life are done already. I see them being fulfilled in my life with the eyes of faith. For my trust is rooted in the never-failing Word of God. Thank you, Jesus, for taking hold of my life and bringing me to the place you want me to be. You are not pleased when I serve you with idols in my heart and perform worship to you without obeying your commandments. Thank you for opening my eyes to see this. Thank you for the privilege to pray for a transformation. I'm grateful because this is the start of something new in my spiritual life. To you be all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen.